now let us discuss about lichens external morphology and economic importance now in this part we discuss about lichens external morphology so these are the general characters of external morphology in lichens what are they the lichens are a small group of curious plants it consists about 400 genera and about 1500 species they are composite or dual organisms formed by a close association of two different plants one is filamentous fungus and other is alga these two organisms live in a close association so much so that they appear to be a single plant the fungal component is called the mycobiont and the algal component is known as the phycobiont the fungal by the fungal component forms the bulk of the lichen thallus in fact the lichen thallus is essentially in nature in fungal nature lichens constitute a small group means of a thallophytic and autotrophic plants the algal component is known as phycobiont phyco means in greek word seaweed bios means life seaweed that is alga and the fungal component as mycobiont in greek word mics means fungus bios means life so this is about the lichens the algal component mainly belongs to a cyanophaceae cyanobacteria blue green algae etc or chlorophaceae means green algae fungal component belongs to ascomycotina which is to be sac fungi or basidiomycotina means club fungi algae synthesize food materials and supplies to fungi in turn fungi gives protection to algae this type of association is called symbiosis the famous indian lichenologist avasti considered the relationship as polysymbiosis or para symbiosis Theophrastus first used the term lichen to denote a superficial growth on bark of the trees. The study of lichen morphology began with the work of Eric Ekerium, who is regarded as father of lichenology. Smith considered them as perennial aerial plants of lowest organisms 
Now, the Lycans also have a physiology of their own. The fungal component obtains food either saprophytically from dead organic matter or parasitically from them living bodies of host organisms. The algal component synthesizes its own food from carbon dioxide and water. In lichens, both the components live in then like on the food manufactured by the algal component. Food materials from the alga diffuse out and are absorbed by the fungal component. The algal component in the association may be belong to the cyanophacy or to the simple chlorophacy. It may be filamentous or non-filamentous. The common blue-green algae partners cyanobacteria are Nostra, Revularia, Cytonema, Calothrix and Bluocapsa. About 80% of the lichen thalli contain green algae. The common green algae are Triboxia, Cocomixa, Myromesia and Trentiholia. Some of the examples of lichens are Parmelia, Cladonia, Ramelina and Usnia. Here these are the general characteristics of lichens. Now we discuss about external morphology. On the basis of the structure of thallus, lichens have been classified into four broad types. They are crustose lichens, folios lichens, fruticose lichens and squamulose lichens. Now let us discuss about crustose lichens. Crustose lichens is also known as encrusting lichens. The thallus is of insignificant size. It is flat, thin and closely adherent to the substratum. It is just like a thin layer or crust closely attached to stones, rocks and or bark of trees. The surface of the thallus is usually divided into more or less hexagonal areas called the aerole. In many species, the thallus is partly buried in the substratum. Some of the common examples are Graphicta, Hematoma, Venusium and Nesidia platycarpa, etc. So here these crustose lichens have thin layer or crust and flat thallus. The thallus is closely attached to the substratum through its whole lower surface. The lichen grows on the surface of rocks, bark of trees and soil. Now let us 
discuss about another type of lichen which is to be folios lichens it is called as leafy lichens folios lichens thallus is flat broad much lobed and leaf like it resembles twinkled and twisted leaves the folios thallus is attached to rocks and twigs by rhizoid like outgrowths called the rhizinae the rhizinae arise from the lower surface the free end of the rhizinae broadens to form a flat disc the disc secretes mucilage and attaches itself formally to the substratum the rhizinae thus function as anchors and absorptive organs the folios like kids thallus has distinct upper and lower surface it grows free from the substratum the lower surface is white or sooty black some of the common examples are parmelia peltigra centuria fusicia etc here this folios lichens they have flat dorsi ventrum branched or lobed and leaf like thalli the thallus spreads horizontally to the substratum this lichens attach to the substratum with the help of rhizomes which is developed from a lower surface of the fungal component the margins of the lobes are smooth or irregular the upper surface of the thallus is folded now let us discuss about the another type of lichens which is called fruticos lichens or shrubby lichens fruticos lichens thallus is most complex slender and freely branched the branches are cylindrical or ribbon like they are either upright or pendulous they are attached to the substrates by a disc like structure at the base there is no differentiation into upper and lower surfaces in the thallus examples are usnia cladonia and ravelina so here these fruticos lichens they have flat ribbon like and branched thalli branches are cylindrical and upright or pendulous these lichens are attached to the substratum by disc like structure present at their bases for example in usnia the branches are long slender and hanging they are curved with fine fibers in other example cladonia the thallus is hollow in the center now let us discuss about another lichens that is to be scramulous lichens these scramulous lichens have thin and flat thalli the thallus is can like with several discrete lobes it is closely attached to the substratum the genera of scramulous lichens may not have a special morphological example for example the thallus of cladonia is scramulous like as the base but it grows as fruticos here these are the external morphology of lichen 
in other part we discuss about the economic importance of lichens